Now by the co-executive director of Open Britain, James McGrory, and Conservative MP and board member of Leave Means Leave, Peter Bone. Uh, many thanks indeed to you both, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. Um, James, if I can firstly start to, with you, should £38 billion be enough to get things moving on? I think it should certainly uh, certainly help. It surprises me that it's taken the government this long to make an offer. I know Peter will be unhappy with the suggestion of even a pound being paid, but Britain is a country that's always paid our dues, we've always paid our debts, and we're going to have to make a financial commitment here. The exact figure, I think, is still to be thrashed out, but the clock is ticking, and I think it's absolutely vital that we make this big offer to try and progress the talks in December, because otherwise I just don't think we're going to have enough time. Peter Bone, how much is too much for you? <laughs> I think you're right. One pound is too much. Uh, there's no legal obligation whatsoever for us to pay any money. And uh, we are net contributors, what, over £200 billion over the years to the European Union super state. If anyone should get any money from this divorce, it's, it's us. I mean, it is the idea we would pay £38 billion is, is absurd. I was at a meeting yesterday with constituents and they said, look, Peter, if you've got £38 billion available, use it to support the NHS. And uh, I, I find that a pretty strong argument. Uh, James, the money should be used to uh, invest in our NHS, a, a, a service which is currently in crisis? I agree with putting more money into the NHS, but I think it's interesting that we're hearing the same tunes from Leave campaigners uh, as we did during the referendum campaign. They promised a cash bonanza for the, for the NHS, and they certainly didn't mention that we were going to have to be paying tens of billions of pounds in a divorce bill. There's lots of stuff coming to light, new facts are coming to light all the time that weren't known uh, at the referendum. And I think people at home have every right to keep an open mind to see if the Brexit they were promised by people like Peter Bone that had 350 million pound a week famously for the NHS, whether that's delivered and they keep an open mind about whether it's the kind of Brexit they want. Um, Peter, in the last um, few moments um, we've got this from Michel Barnier who said that the EU is readying most ambitious trade deal uh, in the, if the UK meets uh, Brexit conditions. Is he basically saying that get your house in order the United Kingdom so we can move on with business? Now what he's now scared stiff is there's a growing body of opinion in the country and in Parliament that says we should just have a clean Brexit, that we should leave now, not pay any money to the EU. And the thing that they are desperate for is because their finance is in such a mess is for us to pay billions of pounds to them. I'm against that and I think actually the bulk of the British people are against that, but they are desperate now because that, because that is becoming a, a, an actual option um, he, he's beginning to realise they've got to say something uh, nice to the to UK, which they haven't done so far. James McGrory? Well, I think if uh, people who are watching this think one side of the negotiating table is in chaos, I don't think they're going to be looking at, at the EU. Our government can't even agree amongst themselves at cabinet level what future trading arrangement we're, we're looking for. What Barnier is doing today is saying the same thing he's been saying for quite a while. Got to sort out the three issues, the money, the rights of citizens and the Irish border, which are all looking fairly lack of progress at the moment, before you move on to the more substantive issues of future trade. Barnier is saying there's a deal to be done but the first thing you need if a deal is to be done is for the government to get a grip and decide what we're actually asking for then you might actually be able to negotiate at the moment we're not even clear what we ourselves want so it's no surprise the EU are, are none the wiser. Um, Peter Bone uh, we've been told that well the European Council are meeting in December in three weeks time we've been told by Donald Tusk Michel Barnier um, of uh, a red line a warning that uh, we need to move on before that takes place how likely is it that that will happen? Well, I, I think Mr Barney has been consistent in saying by October of next year, a deal has to be done to give time for everything to get approved by the uh, 29th of March 2019, and I agree with him that. And the um, Secretary of State for coming out of the EU has said that we really must have everything in line by the spring of next year. So if we can't do that, then we are going to be the option of a clean Brexit, which I actually prefer, will effectively be the only option. So uh, the time is time is motoring on, and if we don't get some progress at uh, December, that m means it, it's even more likely that we'll get a, a clean Brexit, which will allow us to invest billions of pounds in 
to our NHS and other public services, which I think is a good thing. And people just are fed up with these prolonged negotiations. They just want to get, get on with it and come out of the EU, even those people who voted remain at the referendum. Um, James McGorry, you said the government doesn't know what it's up to at the moment. Will it know what it's up to in three weeks' time? It, it, it might, but it's still got a lot of work to do. We haven't even started talking about our future relationship. Peter was saying that it needs to be done and dusted by the spring of next year. Well, even if things go to plan, we'll start talking about our future relationship in March. And I don't think we should be blasé in any way about what no deal means. It means punishing tariffs on everything we import and export to our largest trading partner. It means no security cooperation arrangements. It means no environmental uh, protection arrangements. What happens to the rights of citizens here and British citizens living on the continent and utter, utter chaos and on our ports and perhaps most worryingly the return of a hard border in Northern Ireland. No deal has no upsides for anybody, not for us, not for the EU and the idea that we should be blasé about it and that people at home are suddenly swinging behind it I think is very dangerous indeed. Uh, Peter, you were shaking your head. Well, none of those statements are true. On tariffs, we'll decide what tariffs to impose, if any, on goods from the e EU. There will still be no border in Northern Ireland. Uh, and, and the truth of the matter is we are going to be billions of pounds better off. We are going to do trade deals with countries around the world and we'll prosper. What I've just heard is Project Fear repeated. Project Fear didn't happen last time, didn't work last time, and I don't think it'll work this time either. James, a final thought from you? Well, I think people like Peter are just willfully ignoring the evidence. Ask anybody who's looked at their pay packet uh, lately. Prices going up on the, in the shops and wages are not matching them. We've gone from the fastest growing economy in the G7 before the referendum to now one of the slowest. The pound has taken an absolute beating, as anyone who went on holiday in the summer will know. If, if, if that's fine, then, then, then that's OK for Peter. But I worry about the future of our country, and I particularly worry if we go down this extremely dangerous no-deal route. The debate continues. James McGorry, Peter Bone. Many thanks to you, gentlemen.